Hi everyone, this is Alan Rosinski of Metro Manhattan Office Space. Perhaps the most frustrating aspect of a search for a new office in New York City is something called loss factor. Let's say your company's been in a co-working space and we work for two, three years. You want to make the jump. The market's softened. Office space has become very inexpensive and landlords are more flexible on terms than they have been in many years, which is exactly the situation in the end of 2020. So you retain a real estate broker who's going to show you a number of spaces. The broker tells you he's going to show you a couple of units at 3,000 square feet. You got a team of seven or eight people. You're looking for, say, three offices, a conference room, and an open area. Shows you the first space. It's 3,000 feet, and it looks a lot smaller than 3,000 square feet. And sure enough, you measure the space. What do you find? There's only 2,000 square feet. And the broker starts explaining to you that that's the usable square footage, but the space is marketed as rentable square footage. Very frustrating. I've been in this business for 16 years and tenants get so upset about that, particularly companies which are in the market for the first time. Maybe they've outgrown a co-working space or maybe they are establishing a presence in New York City. Because the practice of using loss factors is a New York City practice and it makes finding a space in New York particularly frustrating. There's an explanation for this, and there's certain workarounds for it. The justification is common areas. When tenants rent the space, they are benefiting from the common areas in a building. And when a landlord purchases a building, he's paying by the square foot. And a lot of the space in a building, because it's allocated towards common areas, is not rentable square footage. They can't collect income from common areas. So the way landlords in New York City deal with this issue is they take the tenant's proportionate share of the common areas and they add it into a space. I'd like to tell you where this applies and where it doesn't apply. If you're looking for a retail space, no loss factor. If the space is 2,000 square feet, it should get pretty close to 2,000 square feet when you measure it. And the reason is for a retail space, you're not using the building's common areas. It's the most legitimate professional landlords in New York City have loss factors. Publicly listed companies, real estate investment trusts like SL Green and Fornado, you go into their buildings and you're going to have loss factors. Now, every landlord in the United States is dealing with this issue, but New York City is particular. If you go outside of New York City and let's say you go to Chicago, on top of your rent, you're going to have a common area maintenance charge. If you lease a space in Chicago and the broker tells you it's 2,000 square feet and you measure the space, sure enough, it will be 2,000 square feet. But if your rent is $30 a square foot, you may have 10 bucks a square foot on top of that for common area maintenance charges. What's frustrating in New York, it's less transparent. They call the square footage a certain number. The measurement they use for square footage is rentable square footage. Rentable square footage is a square footage with which the space is marketed at. That. Usable square footage is what you actually get, and the differential is called a loss factor. And remember, no loss factors in retail space, but in above grade medical office, showroom space, you're gonna have loss factors, unfortunately. And this is a cause for concern. And I mean, before you go out and view space, your broker should really explain this to you. And if it's a cause for concern, you should discuss it with your broker because there's ways to reduce the impact of loss factors. One way to reduce the impact of a loss factor is to lease an entire floor plate. So you control the quarter, the restrooms. That way your loss factor should be less. Instead of maybe being 34 to 42% off the top, maybe it's going to be closer to 33%. It's generally going to be about one third off the top. Another way to reduce the impact of loss factor is to go to a smaller building with proportionately smaller common areas. Like you can go to a small side street boutique loft building, maybe a better class C building, which maybe has two passenger elevators and one freight, or maybe even one really well-maintained passenger elevator and a small lobby. So because the common areas are relatively small, your loss factor should be reduced. Now you gotta be really careful here because if you have one single passenger elevator and that passenger elevator goes down, you may have to take the stairs. If you're on a lower floor, that might be okay. But if the building has one passenger elevator and a freight, you can always take the freight elevator up. But I mean, you have to take these considerations into account because the common areas, the elevators, freight elevators, these are all amenities which you as a tenant benefit from. Another thing which you have to take into account, at the end of the day, you want a space 
which works for you. Where you have a low loss factor, but the shape of the space and the configuration of the space is very efficient. And sometimes as a tenant, you can run into, paradoxically, a high loss factor space, which is just laid out so efficiently that it might work better for you than a low loss factor space. One thing which I have noticed over the years, and it surprises me, frequently tenants who are looking for space don't actually measure the space. And it's a really important thing if you like a space to get a tape measure and you take measurements to see what you're actually paying for. And you'd be so surprised that many tenants don't do this. I always advise my clients to do this. In any case, I hope this helps you in your search for a new office. I'm hoping the start of 21 or at some point in 21 when the market picks up, and hopefully it will, there'll be a lot of opportunities for new tenants searching for space for companies which need expansion space, companies which have lease expirations and they're contracting, they need less space after the pandemic, more of their team is telecommuting, that there will be good opportunities in the commercial real estate market in Manhattan. If you found this content interesting or helpful, I'd be happy if you subscribed to my YouTube channel. You can always find me on Twitter. My Twitter handle is at Metro Manhattan. Until the next time.